this is Ashley and you guys are watching Ashley Epidemic and I'm here with a bit of a new series. So I'm kind of back for what I'm gonna call a new series. What in the K-drama? Maybe? I'm playing with names. But as the title kind of implies, it will be entirely about K-dramas. And I wanted to start off my very first video with talking to you just a little bit about my history with K-dramas and what my favorite genre in K-dramas actually is. So let's just go ahead and jump right into that. There are so many different genres within K-dramas. It really is, it's just regular TV, it's just in Korean. But what I have found is that my favorite genre that is very present within K-dramas is not quite so present here. Um, and I think I have a few ideas as to why that may be, but my favorite genre ultimately is the romance genre. And now typically I don't, I'm not into very many romance books. Typically I'm not into many romance books. I do like books that have romance elements. I'm not really into romance movies in the West, but I do like books that have a couple that gets together. I like being able to ship a couple. But usually, a pure romance isn't usually my thing, at least from the stateside's perspective. Now, when you change that up and you put it in the K-dramas, K-dramas, I tend to find that I like the romances over there. And I think that might be largely because of the fact that there is a beginning, a middle, and an end. There is not this indeterminate amount of time that it's going to last. It is also long enough that characters get a chance to breathe. So unlike a movie that only has an hour and a half for people to go from hating each other to potentially loving each other, it's just a little bit too rushed. So the K-drama has time for the characters to breathe, grow, have those pains and chances for them to actually start to get along versus them hating each other. And it has that time to have the full arc while still having an end goal because one of the things that do, does tend to happen with US side when they do actually do a romance in TV format, often TV shows here, they don't have an end usually. Sometimes there are limited series which are popping up now more with online sh shows and everything, but typically, traditionally, it'll just kind of just stretch and they try to pull it out as long as possible. And that results in it loses tension or it just gets tiring after a while. So I really do love the fact that we have <clears throat> beginning, middle, end, the progression, time to grow, all that. Like I mentioned, because of the way that things are structured here, you typically don't see too many romance shows over here. Um, and if they are, they fall more into the rom-com category. And typically when they fall into the rom-com category like that, they are more falling into the comedy side with just elements of the romance. Um, the one exception that I will kind of say that I do know about that I do enjoy as well is Jane the Virgin. It has the same rises and falls, but it is different in that it stretches out over a lot longer time. But K-dramas are very concise. You have the story all in 16 to 20 episodes, generally. Also, K-dramas also have an edge on the tone because it's very difficult, I think, like I mentioned before, in the US it tends to be comedy with romance elements. But these romances in K-dramas, the focus is the romance and there are a lot of funny moments and they're humorous and they often have other elements to the story other than just the romance. There's some mystery or there is an actual drama so you have like um, melodrama elements or it is a comedy or there's different elements that these shows can pull in. Sometimes it's historical and that gives these shows these wide breadth of topics that they can cover and decades and periods and different things that they can attack. Typically what I found is that they tend to be 
While on the more serious side, they didn't really have a lot of comedic elements, some more than others, along with their other subgenre, whichever they choose to bring along. And then they tend to not be super serious, unless their subgenre is like melodrama. They tend to be light and fun and enjoyable, something that you can just sit down and just binge, enjoy the characters, have fun, laugh, get frustrated over things that don't happen right away, that sort of thing. So it makes the watching experience very enjoyable. And that's really my favorite genre, the romance genre within K-dramas. But yes, I do watch all sorts of things. I watch thriller, I watch suspense, um, and I do on occasion watch melodramas too. So I'm, I really try to make sure that I spread my wings, watch as much as I possibly can, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. This is just a little intro. I'm planning on doing more videos specific to specific shows and just K-drama things in general. But if there are things that you would like to see, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And I'm going to try to like work some things out and try to make sure that I can get you some content that you like and that fits with the things that I like and that it all work for everybody. Um, also, I'm planning on doing a K-drama watch long on an older K-drama and let me know what drama you would like to do that for. Um, it will probably start the second week of July, so it'll be a couple of weeks. So if you are interested, go ahead and let me know what you are thinking of and I'm going to arrange that so that way we can have a place to talk and it'll be a lot of fun and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.